that 9-11 was a false flag operation intended to authorize the doctrines and funds needed for a new level of imperial mobilization. An inside job? How dare you? They wanted to become emperors or dictators, uh, declared emergencies, and then they said, well, they were the emperor in charge of solving the problem. It was an inside job. Not a left was an inside let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. Yes, we can. The sustainable goal is the elimination of the middle class. The world cannot support six billion people. But you see, the plan behind sustainable development includes population control. It's a program for land use control, education control, and population control. The leaders of the sustainable movement say that the world's human population should not exceed 500 million people. That's a 93% reduction. Law ever become a reality in America? which you paid for, with your tax money. There are millions of them waiting for you in different states across the country. Each coffin can hold three or four people, and most of you will be ground into one right after martial law is declared in America. Your President George Bush is an important member of the Illuminati. The master plan of this satanic group of puppets, is a new world order. Their goal is to kill 90% of the world's population so they can better control the rest of us, and they will start in America. They have already built many industrial ovens inside the FEMA death camps. These ovens will be used to get rid of the dead bodies, however, even burning these ovens day and night they will not be faster than the gas killing hundreds to thousands of people at a time. So the plastic coffins will be used to store the rotting bodies. If you are wondering why all this is going to happen to America, the answer is because you have rejected God and mocked his law. Your nation proclaims faith that it does not follow, you will reap what you have sown. I have very important information that is crucial for you Americans to know. On March 17th, the House of Representatives held a special closed session. This was only the fourth time in 176 years that Congress has closed its doors to the public. They also discussed, 1. The imminent collapse of the U.S. economy to occur by September 2008. 2. The imminent collapse of U.S. federal government finances by February 2009. 3. 
the possibility of civil war inside the USA as a result of the collapse. 4. Advance roundups of insurgent US citizens likely to move against the government. 5. The detention of those rounded up at Rex 84 FEMA camps constructed throughout the USA. 6. The possibility of retaliation against members of Congress for the collapses. 7. The location of safe facilities for members of Congress and their families to reside during expected massive civil unrest. 8. The necessary and unavoidable merger of the United States with Canada for its natural resources and with Mexico for its cheap labor pool. 9. The issuance of a new currency, the Amaro, for all three nations as the proposed solution to the coming economic crisis. The savings of millions will evaporate overnight due to currency devaluation and bank failures. Unrest it will begin in the larger cities first, then spreading out into the countryside. Strong and repressive laws are newly enacted as police and military forces spread throughout the country to counter all signs of growing rebellion. If you are an American hearing these words, you must understand this is happening now, it's not conspiracy theory. It is fact. We are in the midst of these cataclysmic human events. Let me explain to you the red list. Red list. These people are the enemies of the state. They are the leaders of patriot groups, outspoken ministers, outspoken talk show hosts, community leaders, and bloggers who talk about the government. These people and their families will be dragged out of their homes in the middle of the night. They will be driven to a black unmarked helicopter waiting to fly them to FEMA detention camps to be killed immediately. This will take place approximately two weeks before martial law is enforced, shortly after the crash of the economy. Law ever become a reality in America? Some fear any nuclear, biological, or chemical attack on U.S. territory might trigger just that. And as KSLA News 12's Jeff Farrell discovered, the clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem, us. From my cold, dead hands. Charlton Heston's famous declaration captures a truly American value, the overarching desire to protect our freedoms. But gun confiscation is exactly what happened during the state of emergency following Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. U.S. troops also arrived, something far easier to do even now thanks to last year's elimination of the 1878 Posse Comitatus Act. That forbid U.S. troops from policing on American soil. If martial law were enacted here at home, like depicted in the movie The Siege, easing public fears and quelling dissent would be critical. And that's exactly what the clergy response team, as it's called, helped accomplish in New Orleans. Uh, Jeff, the primary thing that we say to anybody is let's cooperate and get this thing over with, and then we'll settle the differences once the crisis is over. Such clergy response teams would walk a tightrope between the needs of the government versus the wishes of the public. The clergy, one of the biggest tools that they will have in helping calm the public down or obey the law, is the Bible itself. Specifically, Romans. Romans 13. Because the government is established by the Lord, you know, and, uh, and that's what we believe in the Christian faith. That's what's stated in the scripture. Civil rights advocates believe the amount of public cooperation may depend largely on how long they expect a suspension of their rights. According to Tuberville, during Hurricane Katrina, the clergy response team provided 38 chaplains a day around the clock at eight different camps.